So, Musikpause. Ich bin gespannt. Das ist von Herrn Morat. Oh nee, das ist von Advanced Sim Racing. Oh Mann, Kyle and Don't Do It. Nee, jetzt komme ich wieder auf irgendwelche Ideen und möchte dann doch das Rick haben. Mann, Kylind, stop it. Oh shoot, he's here. <lacht> Was war denn das für ein Move? <lacht> Okay, das war witzig. Hey, welcome to OSR. I'm freezing out there. I know. Welcome to Montreal. Thank you. Let's go for a tour. Right on. I just arrived in Montreal at the Advanced Sim Racing headquarters. Mark's going to take me on a tour. He's going to show each room in the brand new facility. Take it away. Yeah, come on down, guys. Let's get to it. Nee, also das mit dem Tischtennis, äh, das, oh, Chat, man, wie gern hätte ich so, eine, so, ein, so ein eigenes Ding, ne? Oh, das ist so schön. Apex Room first. The first thing you see when you walk in. This I would call our hero sim, or our flagship sim. It's the big boy that we use for training. When we have people like Phil or Racine here from Advanced Motorsports, they take drivers into the sim and give them a proper lesson on how to get fast. So this so, is. So what do you have like for for the rig? How is this built? How is this one spec'd out? Uh, this one is is a is a pretty chunky unit. The first I think thing you'll notice are the screens. LG OLED 45 inch curved 800 har. It's the most curved screen you can find in the business. And then we're running on D box Gen 5 down there. We have a full setup with SimiCube Ultimate. Uh, just a classic round wheel here, Asher button plate. We're using the VNM shifter, using valve handbrake, precision sim engineering, uh, PSP, and yeah, it's a good it's, one. It's a pretty decent. I have one on my rig. Yeah, I know, I know. Shit, auch kein eins. I'm trying to get one for my rig. I just I have they're hard to find. They're really hard. I have a couple if you need. Okay, I'll, I'll find you. Aua. I don't know why I have to offer you one <laughs> because of the sim racing uh, central over here. Yeah, I know, but we prioritize clients, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. So this one is also decked out for Christmas. As, as you can imagine, this is not how it's usually set up, but yeah, it's festive. Yeah, this is this is so impressive. Like, I don't think video does it justice how immersive no, no. this setup actually this is. This is massive. And you know why it's good? Especially with this seat, it kind of blocks out your peripheral vision. So you only see the screen. So if you're yeah. sitting in a dark room, good sound quality, and you can get a really, really immersive experience yeah. without doing VR, which is cool. We call this one the pit lane room. Wow. Um, this is basically our test bench for commercial sim centers. Okay. So we set up four, let's call them more arcadey setups compared <laughs> to the one next door. Um, and they're all set up on uh, VRLs lounge control software. So basically this thing allows us to run uh, multiplayer sessions off this controller here. Nice. Um, and we run a set of Corsa. And yeah. Yeah, just fun multiplayer. You can crash into each other and try to race. So yeah, that's how it goes. So what do you, what do you have here? ASR3s, Moza yep. equipment, um, and they're all, uh, what's this all about? This back here behind us. Oh, so this does a uh, leaderboard. Um, actually, we have a That's leaderboard cool. up there. It's not running. This can also do leaderboard. This is the control panel for the servers and the sessions. And then, yeah, people come over here and, you know, there's two options here, either GT Racing or good old Drift on oh, yeah. Seto Corsa. Um, and it's all multiplayer. So this this is really our test bench because we're getting more and more calls for yeah. people that want to set these up in a commercial space. Oh, Beautiful. So we like to break things before we sell them, <laughs> you know? I can test that for you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Du, kein Problem, wenn ihr was wen braucht zum kaputt machen, du, das äh, hier, bin bekannt dafür. This is Podium. This is the virtual reality room. Okay. So, one okay. thing we notice over the last few years is D-Box works surprisingly well with uh, VR. So, we partnered up with uh, Vario with their Aero uh, VR headset, which works really, really well for sim racing. So we've set these up here. We give people demos of VR on D-Box, which is not something a lot of people have tried in their lives. So yeah. 
It's a pretty exclusive The D-Box size. Gen 5. Yep. Such a good system. Both of them have D-Box Gen 5. Yep. We didn't spare any expenses here. And these are ASR6 chassis now. Yep. Semicube Pro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Corbo seats, which Corbo kindly donated. Um, yeah, these are pretty decent setups. They, they would run around $25,000, $30,000 um, and can give you a superbly immersive experience. It's, it's nuts, baffling when you put the headset on with, with the feedback from the wheel, the feedback from the D-Box. Yeah. You kind of lose yourself for a minute. Yeah, that's one thing I haven't sure, tried yet is D-Box with VR. That's something I want to try next for sure. Let's go. And that's why we're here. I, I'm really curious about this main room, but before we look at the main room, I want to see the Top Gun room. This is the one, being a race car driver, you would wonder like why I would be interested in flight sim, but for some reason, racing drivers love flying. Yep. So yep. here we are, the flight sim room. This is the Top Gun room. We thought we were clever with the naming scheme. Um, so we run basically a couple of games here. We run Microsoft Flight Sim. We run DCS for fighter jets. We also do a Star Wars Quadrants, if, if you want to shoot at spaceships. I love Star Wars. Whoa. <laughs> I'm into it. This. Yeah, Good. this one is on D Box. We just set it up. Um, and we're featuring Trustmaster equipment, the Warthog kit, and yep. Honeycomb Yoke. So these will do a pretty decent job at covering all kinds of controls for every kinds of plane. We're also doing the rudder pedals down there with uh, the Trustmaster pendular pedals. So pretty well, which which D Box is this? Is this this Gen is 3? Gen 3. Yeah, this is an older generation. We actually uh, upgraded one of our clients' rig and then okay. brought this one back and you know. Any plans for a, like a six inch travel in yes, here? Very much so. We actually purchased a three inch setup and we're gonna probably do triple arcs with three inch D-Box. Just because. Yeah, that would be epic. <laughs> just All right, because. Now this room here. The space. This this is called the space? Not really, it doesn't have a name. <laughs> you need the to lounge, come up with a name. The lounge, I guess. This is epic. Like this is the thing, when we first walked through the door, this is what I saw. <laughs> I was like blown away. This is kind of like the dream setup. For, yeah, yeah, I mean, is. I'm just thinking this one rig in the middle here that... Um, this little AMG D-Box beauty. Yeah, what, what, what do we have wow. over here? I don't know. I guess we'll see some content okay, soon. Okay, okay. Some content? Stay tuned. Yeah, little AMG D-Box collab? Yes. May or may not have already driven it. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, this is such an awesome space. Uh, it's wide open. Oh, it's, 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 man, it's really this rig for me to hold it. But it's just in Canada and this is the toy. Fuck! The guy's playing ping pong. <laughs> like, this is literally the dream for the office. Yeah, so basically what we do here is corporate rentals. Um, if you have, well, I guess these guys are going uh, to I'm not playing, right? <laughs> I'll play, I'm going to play after. Right, We're okay. going to get into it after. You guys are going down, though. You have to put up the live stream. Yeah. Live stream ping pong. Yeah, let's do that. So this is our corporate rental space. Like, if you have a company or a bunch of friends, oh, you can come cool. here and just rent out the space, the Sims, the bar, the TVs. Everything you need for a good party, uh, we now offer that. We also okay. have the coaches come in if you want to learn to drive while you're getting drunk. Yeah. That's also an option. Oh dear, I don't <laughs> condone this behavior. I, I think the best thing to do is, let's start from the kitchen. I want to take a look at the kitchen because I see an espresso machine. The espresso machine is it? Yeah, yeah. You know absolutely. how much I'm into espresso. Yeah, absolutely. So let's have a look over here. So this is our this is our bar area. I guess we serve coffee, we serve drinks, uh, snacks, and everything people would need when they come here to just have a sim session. Uh, we also have an impressive collection of Legos. Yeah. Um, you know, all the toys and all the stuff we find, we just put it here. Um, and we have a pretty decent espresso machine, as you can see. You've tested it. What's I've the verdict? It, I've had a, it's pretty good. Um, good. What? Actually, okay. very good. <laughs> Thank you. It gave me the energy to, uh, to shoot this right now. Right on. Actually, right so, on. no, really super impressive. The ping pong table, I'm sure, is pretty popular with the employees. Yes. yes. How many guys do you have working here now? Close to 40. Okay. Yeah. Ich frage mich gerade, ob sich das so toll rentiert, wenn da 40 Leute angestellt sind. Holy moly, das ist halt schon gar nicht mal so klein. 40 guys yeah. and um, most of them are pretty good at ping pong. I thought I was oh. good before I started playing against these guys. Sign helmet, who's that? Uh, Bill Goldberg, the wrestler. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Beautiful. Yeah, we're trying to collect them. Yeah. If we have a Morad one, maybe one day. Uh, you know, I, I've never given a helmet away, but oh, really? uh, you guys are definitely <laughs> on the top of the list. Nice, if, nice. I'm give, if I was to give one. So, so this is Francis, one of our owners, trying to play ping pong. <laughs> it's not going too well, but whatever. No, uh, 
Listen. <laughs> if anybody has tips for uh, for Francis for ping pong, I mean, yeah. by all means, drop it down below in the comments. Let yes. us know yes. if you're a ping pong master. Let's L look at this technique. Actually, let's just see. Do you even call that technique? Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's. What kind of grip is that? Let's go over there. Let's get to something more interesting than ping pong. So we have uh, probably one of the most expensive walls in Montreal here. Um, we like to display the equipment we have in stock. So this is where we have a selection of wheels that people can get their hands on. You yeah. know, when you're, you're buying a $1,000 product, it's nice to be able to hold it. Yeah. Just feel the weight, feel the grips. So we try to give people as much options as we can. Hmm. Um, and this place is open to the public. Absolutely. Anybody can come in here and... Okay, my brother. Mm -hmm. Ihr durftet das also behalten, ja? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. How, how does it work? Like, you can just come in you and drive? In. Yeah, you can walk in. Uh, we do rentals by the 30 minutes or 60 okay. minutes. Uh, and you can come here and just try the products and see everything up close. Um, but yeah, and you can also rent the space, like I said earlier. If you'd like that, you can rent the entire setup with nine. Sim on your own. Okay, okay, okay. If you're that kind of person, yeah. You can check out the different types of custom painting yep. for the the rigs. I know mine's custom painted, which is. is amazing. So. Was kostet ein Lenkrad? Von bis also 1400, 1400, 1100. Nicht so teuer, nicht so teuer, nicht so teuer, 1000, äh, 800, glaube ich knapp unter 1000, das ist ein Replika, das kostet glaube ich 700, das kostet 900, also wenn das hier das Originale ist, was ich gerade nicht weiß, oder, also wenn es Replika ist, dann glaube ich um die 1000, wenn es das Originale ist, dann sind wir bei über 2000. Das kenne ich nicht. Das kostet über 1000. Das kostet weit über 1000. Das kostet 700. Ja, also da hängt schon ein bisschen was. Da hängt schon ein bisschen was. So das Teuerste würde ich. Also wie gesagt, das hier, wenn es nicht das Replika ist, ist es das Teuerste. Das kostet über zwei. Ich glaube, 2,3 oder 2,4 kostet das. You can just come in you and drive. Yeah. You rent if you're, if you're that kind of person. Aber du, kein Problem, das hier, der Shifter, wenn ich das richtig in Erinnerung habe, äh, und ich gebe jetzt extra mal eine Preisrange an, das ist ein Haarschalter, der kostet zwischen 1.500 und 2.000 Euro. Nur das, nur das Ding hier. Und das hier ist, glaube ich, äh, die kenne ich gar nicht, die Pedale, aber es sieht auch aus, als wenn es ein bisschen Geld kostet. You can check out the different types of custom painting yep. for the, the rigs. I know mine's custom painted, which is, is amazing. So, is. Um, mine at home is this color. It's pretty nice. That's beautiful. But All yeah, the different we, finishes you can go with. Absolutely. We give people options. I mean, people like to have personalized uh, sims that, you know, represent them or the brand yeah. that they love. So. I know. You don't have any active pedals on the wall. No, because they fly out the shelves too fast. <laughs> You're sold out all the time. Yes, we are. <laughs> Simicube has done a fantastic job with you know, yeah. the product, the marketing, and yeah, they've no, been... The pedal is, is un unbelievable. It's the best best brake pedal. It is. It is. By far, it's exactly like my, my race car. And that's why we just can't keep them. They come in, they come out. Beautiful. So, okay, where what's are we going? next? Where are we going? Should we go downstairs? Can like it get facility? better than this? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, We're okay, still working let's... on it. We're still working on it. <laughs> show me, show me um, where everything, where all the magic happens. I want to okay. see where all the, the product is. Because this right. is all fun. Yeah, this is the fun part. Um, but I want to see what you guys actually do in terms when of like... we actually work. Yeah, I want to see right. what, where, where you guys work. Good. This seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. So we'll start with the factory and then we'll go to the build room. This is the ASR factory. Um, I guess we could go up there first to give you a pretty good. Yeah, let's go. Let's get a bird's eye view. view. Of this place. Yeah, exactly. You you walk in and you see all the the showroom and it's awesome. But then you come back here and this kind of like. Also ich war ja dieses Jahr äh, ich war ja dieses Jahr bei Denzu ne? im SRS Shop Partner von mir äh, Simrace Shop ist wirklich ein sehr 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 guter Laden kann ich euch nur ans Herz legen von mir getestet auch privat ohne Sponsoring. Und Denso hat echt schon ein großes Lager, ne? Also wirklich ein großes. Ein großes, wo du wirklich reingehst als Simracer und sagst, holy shit, wow. Hier steht wirklich eine Menge Stuff drin. Aber das hier, 
Und das ist ja wirklich nur Sim Racing Chat. Nur, das dürft ihr nicht vergessen. Da, da steht nur Sim Racing Stuff drin. Da geht's, da ist nichts anderes oder irgendwas. Das ist nur Sim Racing. Das hier ist schon echt groß. Ja gut, bei denen ist es auch so, äh, muss man sagen, die haben auch einen Service, wo die wirklich zu dir kommen und den ganzen Stuff bei dir aufbauen. Ich weiß nicht, wie viel die verkaufen. Also ich sag mal so. Also sie haben eine Sache, die für mich persönlich den kompletten Alu-Rig-Markt revolutionieren. Was die für mich herausstechen lässt aus all den anderen Herstellern. Und das ist einfach nur der Fakt, dass du einen Wheelbase-Mount hast, also wo deine Wheelbase drin ist, was du jederzeit mit zwei Schnellspannern vor- und zurückschieben kannst, hoch- und runter schieben kannst und du kannst es tilten. Und so wie es aussieht, also ich meine, ich habe das jetzt zwei Videos gesehen, wo sie Rigs zusammenbauen, das ist wirklich clean as fuck, was du da kriegst von denen. Also das, was die dir anbieten, zumindest das, was ich sehe, ist top of the line stuff. Das ist richtig krass. Das ist wirklich richtig krass. Also ich kann mir schon vorstellen, dass da viele Leute einkaufen. Das ist schon wirklich äh, nicht schlecht. Wie teuer war ungefähr dein Rig? Also das da äh, mit allem, also wirklich alles, was da steht. Da sind wir, glaube ich, mittlerweile über 20.000 Euro. Ähm, also letzte Hochrechnung waren 15 mal irre mit den alten Monitoren, nicht mit dem neuen Rechner. Also das, da sind wir glaube ich so an die 20.000. Und bei dem, kommt drauf an immer, was da dran ist, äh, würde ich jetzt mal über den Daumen schätzen bei 2.000 bis 3.000 Euro. So Pi mal irre. Ohne Rechner. Mit Rechner sind wir wahrscheinlich bei 3, 4. Je nachdem, was da für eine Wheelbase dran hängt. Also ja, so Pi mal irre. Also ist schon ein bisschen was da reingegangen die letzten Jahre. So, gucken wir weiter. Awesome, but then you come back here and this kind of like blows you away. Trust but me. At the end of the day, it makes sense. Like you have yeah. large products, you have a lot of products. And you, yep. I mean, it's, it's about crazy. About 450 on the website. Yeah. Uh, we're up to about 30,000 orders now, so. It's a one-stop shop. It is. Wow. Uh, that's, one-stop that's shop for sim racing. It Anything, is. like you guys literally carry everything. Which Everything you need to build a sim from your monitor, chassis, accessories, wheel pedals, we have it here somewhere. You could just walk in here and build a full sim from scratch. Yeah. Which is not something a lot of companies can claim. Uh, it's been a lot of work. We started in the garage. We're here now. We still don't believe it ourselves. Like this, this to me is just mind blowing. Uh, but yeah, we keep grinding. It's um, like right now, you've seen the order numbers. We have yeah. some orders to ship out. And, you know, we're going yeah. at it. I can totally understand the feeling of you know we're in that growth phase as well with yeah. more adness but yeah. you guys have like large products you need a big space absolutely and it's taken off like you guys got in at the right time and yep. also the customer service is incredible there's no surprise why you guys have blown up <laughs> like you. it makes sense I appreciate it it makes sense i can well, tell you firsthand i know that with um with this industry it's um you know it's so saturated but yeah. it's so easy if you're just good with customer service yep. good with your clients you can easily rise to the top and yeah, that's I, what you guys are doing like. reputation is everything i mean what we do is not rocket science it's I'll, and i'll show you a bit of the production process but reputation and and the way we handle clients the way we handle rmas problems anything that happens with our clients we always take care of them yeah it's really like uh, sehr gut weil ein zuschauer hat da bestellt der hat sich das rick uh, geholt und er sagt der kundenservice ist wirklich sehr sehr gut Yeah, that's good. Almost it. four years now, and that's one thing that's never going to change. Of course, the volume is different. Today yeah. we get over a hundred emails a day, but <laughs> we try to keep up. Yeah. So what what's what's all down here? Um, what do you guys house in this area? This is raw materials. Basically, you see all of this. This is aluminum. This is this is future chassis, monitor stands, etc. Um, we have a factory in Ontario. We work with. This <laughs> oh, Brody! Das hätte ich ja auch gerne, ne? Irgendwann mal. So als so als äh, Traum für später, einfach mal so eine Bude, wo meterweise <lacht> Aluprofil liegt. Oh, das wäre so eine schöne Halle, alles da drin, alles aufgeräumt, alles verpackt. Oh. So this is all Canadian there. metal? Yes. This Everything is all here? Yeah. So the, the aluminum is made in Ontario and the steel is made in the factory here in Quebec. Okay. Was? And it's all our own custom design. Like we have our own tooling uh, at the factory so they can produce our extrusion that is specific to us. Yeah. So we've, we order decent 
quantities. I think we're one of their good clients. I would say so. Yeah, absolutely. Got and a, then, few, a few ASR Pros, a few ASR 6s. So where is the ASR Pro uh, material? Like, would it, How much different is it? Uh, I you, guess it's a, It's uh, probably back there somewhere. You'd probably notice it. Like this is three inch, this is three inches long, yeah. 4.5 inches. So that would be like an ASR 6. Yeah, this would be an ASR four and six, four. Uh, three, a three, and then you have the pros back there that are okay. flat face, yeah. smooth, um, somewhere in there. <laughs> so you guys do all the printing in house. I, mean, I guess we're going to get to that in a bit. Yeah, with those machines down yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. We first we cut, so everything gets cut up here. Yeah. Um, and then process, That's meaning close. we sand the edges, we clean the aluminum, because you know some some other competitors have a lot of aluminum dust on their product. Yeah. We don't want to see that, so we cut everything here prep the aluminum and then it I've goes. noticed that actually with some extrude yeah. I, I, through accessories that you get mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of the aluminum dust and the, yeah. the bits yeah. I've actually gotten that in my foot before <laughs> I noticed that whenever you guys ship things it's completely clean yeah. which I appreciate it I'm sure other people will appreciate too. for sure and and it's all about the attention to detail and I think that's one of the key aspect of our success is we we're sim racers ourselves. We started this company because we wanted to make rigs that were nice and sturdy yeah. and didn't cost 400 bucks to ship. Yeah. So here we are today applying the same logic, but with 40 people yeah. in the team. So this little thing is a powder coat huh. uh, booth and oven. So all, there's some ASR Pro. Okay, beauty. So this is pre-print. Pre oh, we're about to lose Phil. <laughs> so this Phil. is- <laughs> Phil Bouchard, our cameraman. Yeah. He's for this champion video. cameraman, there we go. Yes. So this is- Big shout out to Phil. <laughs> this is ready to be painted. So tomorrow this will all get painted uh, in the uh, spray booth over there. Okay. And then we'll go into the oven and we'll come out looking like this-ish, depending on the color choice. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you guys do everything, like all these uh, seat brackets, everything you do, obviously, in-house. In so these are our designs, and they get, uh, they get made in a factory about an hour from here. Okay. Yep. And then it gets treated here. Yep. Beautiful. That, that's how they come to us. Really. Okay, that's the raw material, yeah, and the you, you powder coat them. Yep. Clean. Mir fällt gerade ein, ich könnte mir aus Aluprofilen eigentlich meine Füße bauen für meinen Schreibtisch. Also für meinen... Ach, Dizzy. Warum hast du dir eigentlich noch keine Schwerlastregale aus Aluprofilen gebaut? Ob das günstig wäre? Das sieht doch nicht cool aus. Da geht es mir um Funktionalität. Pass auf, mein Gedanke dahinter ist schon wieder, äh, du könntest hier drunter, könntest du dir das Gestell bauen. Ich kann die Höhe, so wie ich sie möchte, mir aussuchen. Plus, ich hätte Nuten, in die ich Goodies reinmachen könnte. Beispielsweise könnte ich mir hier einen einen Mülleimer drucken, sodass ich immer den Müll da rein machen könnte, als Beispiel. Müsste man mal ausrechnen, wie teuer das ist. Aber das wird schon ganz schön teuer, weil das hier sind ja schon zwei Meter. Das ist ein Meter zehn. Nochmal zwei Meter, dann bist du ja schon bei sechs Meter und zwanzig Zentimeter und hast noch keine Füße unten drunter. Müsste man mal ausrechnen. Aber das wäre wirklich geil, weil das Coole daran wäre, wir könnten uns unten drunter auch Rollen machen und dann können wir den ganzen Tisch bewegen. Das wäre schon geil. Hm, hm, hm. Ich bin halt so ein Aluprofil-Mensch. Oh, ah, ja. Could you technically paint Bar this any color? Absolutely. Here's so if port. you have a client that wants them in red, you could do it in red. Yes, we could do all colors of the rainbow. Now We've... you tell me. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Black we, is the way to go. Like we have a, a selection of about 40,000 colors. You, you wouldn't yeah. imagine the numbers of red you can find in their selection. It's, yeah. it's absolutely nuts. And it's not only the color. But you can get the texture, the finish, the chrome, the you can pick a lot of different surfaces. Yeah. So you can do a das lot of halt so ein Ding für mich, wo ich schon wieder sagen würde, Alter, ich würde mir ein mattes Rig bestellen. In matt. Oh. Scheiße. Scheiße. Wenn das nicht so teuer wäre, ne? With powder coating. Awesome. So what's what's next in this tour? Um, I would say then once this is all done, we get to packaging. So okay. one of the important The most aspects, important part. Yeah, I think when you deal with a chassis that's $1,000, you want to ship it to a client and you want it to arrive in, in proper form, proper yeah. condition. So packaging, uh, we've had all of our boxes designed. Uh, so wie ich das gern hätte, sind wir, glaube ich, bei 1.3, 1.4 Und dann noch von, uh, von Kanada nach Europa rüber. <lacht> Specific, um, let's, let's call it UPS protection. Yeah. 
because you know the the delivery companies sometimes are rough with products. Uh, I've seen some videos. Yeah, exactly. So we UPS proof <laughs> most of our products. Yeah. Shout out to UPS. Um, <laughs> And then we have people here that carefully package and wrap every single item that we chip out. Just, it's, it's still gonna happen once in a while. I'm not gonna lie. You see one package yeah. out of a thousand that gets pretty banged up, but yeah. we, we make it so it's optimal and, and we maximize the packages that arrive in yeah. proper condition. The cool thing is like you guys take such a, a big effort, you make a big effort to make sure that everything arrives properly. Yeah. The, the thing that's terrible is when you get a customer like, one out of a thousand that comes to you and is like, oh, yeah. and they're freaking out. Yeah. If usually if people are just reasonable, they then are. you take care of it. Exactly. We ship we ship right back. If yeah. if something arrives to your place and it's damaged, we don't yeah. even ask questions. We ship a replacement. Yeah. And that's that's how Das stimmt übrigens. Also das stimmt wirklich. Besco hat das ausprobiert. Bei dem sind, glaube ich, zwei Teile kaputt gewesen. Das haben die instant äh, neu verschickt. Instant. How we've been operating forever and we're not going to change that. Yeah. Just one note. That's what I appreciate from you guys and yeah. everything I've heard before even we started working together is just, you know, how yeah. uh, good the customer service was and, you know, it's you're on hear. top of it. I know that you're, it's good to you're hear. on 100%. So what is all this stuff you may ask? This is basically all Lego. the... <laughs> <laughs> They're the nickname for these plates. But these are all the specific items that would go into a complete product. So yeah. adjustable feet plate, fixing plate for the monitor stand, uh, advanced faces, which we're running out of. Uh, angle plates for the monitor stand. So every small item also gets packaged uh, pretty tightly. Like yeah, you will not be able yeah, to. This is this. How I got my uh, integrated uh, monitor yeah. mount for the other chassis. I'm I'm working on a test bench. Yeah, <laughs> let's say so. I I mean yeah, the, the packaging is fantastic. Yeah, it's absolutely. Good. So this all the hardware gets packaged here. All the smaller pieces and parts get uh, packaged here. It's all handmade, and and one of the reasons is also we want to keep an eye on quality control so when we package let's say this plate there's an inspection before we package anything everything gets looked at yeah um, so you don't want to ship out anything that's scratch or less than perfect yeah um, this would be all of our inventory which is a big overstatement because all of this is probably sold and yeah. we have to ship it but all the larger items wow. get packed up and stored here here's our 6f uh, yeah. 4 pro the Radical so, Edition. How many people are working down on this floor to make sure that this runs smoothly? Uh, depending on what day it is, I would say anywhere between 25 and 30. Okay, so the majority of the staff is down here. Obviously, it makes sense. Yeah. This is such a large space. This is where the mat. Maga, dann überlege ich mir, wie viele Bestellungen da reingehen. Bei 30 Leute überleg mal, wie viele Bestellungen da durchgenagelt werden. Und das ist ja eigentlich nur. Uh, US und Kanada. Magic happened, Holy yeah. shit, All Junge. Ey, überleg mal, wenn die Welt, ich sag's wie es ist, ne, wenn die weltweit verschicken würden, also weltweit nicht, dass man, also du kannst dich bei denen melden und dann ist das alles cool, aber wenn die standardmäßig weltweit anbieten würden, das wird die, das, die, die, die Bude würde einfach explodieren. Die würde einfach, die würde einfach explodieren, die Bude, weil die, das ist halt, ohne Scheiß, das sind halt Rigs. Ich meine, es ist nichts Besonderes, das sind alle Profile, ne, so. Aber dadurch, dass sie bei dieser, nur allein diese Lenkradkonstruktion, das macht die so speziell, weil das so genial ist und so simpel ist, dass die Leute das wahrscheinlich wahnsinnig, also da, ich würde nichts anderes mehr kaufen. Yeah, we, we have to keep up with the volume. I think when we started this business, we had no idea what we were walking into. Yeah. Now we get anywhere between 40 and 100 orders every single day. So you have to imagine we have to yeah. ship out the same volume. So we need the resources. We need the guys Oof. that are grinding with us yeah. that are passionate. We've been lucky to find people that keep up. And, and, you know, this industry is so small. It's all about having fun and yeah. being passionate about what you do. So we're lucky to have the team that we have. Otherwise, there's no way we could yeah. make it. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. What else? Let's go in the cage. Yeah, let's see. What is uh, the what cage? Is, yeah, tell me. This is where we keep the expensive stuff. Oh, dear. Yeah, so if you want to break in and steal stuff here, please don't. But <laughs> this is where you would go. There are armed guards. Don't try it. <laughs> and we actually have a security system, which is unlocked. Thank God. <laughs> so it's pretty dark in here, but it gives you an idea. Like, just here, that's our inventory of D-Box. Uh, monitors, more D-Box. All the Simicube are in the back. Um, we keep all the wheels, pedals, um, the hissing valve stuff, you know, the Assetec stuff, it all gets stored here. 
because it would be easy for us to lose control of all the yeah. inventory that goes in and out. So all the most expensive smaller items get stored here uh, and securely locked in place. Everybody has an access card. So when they come in, we know who came in, we yeah. know what they take. Um, so we, we try to keep a, a certain level of control over this uh, specific space. You're gonna leave, space. leave it open just for like about 10 minutes after <laughs> we're done shooting? Sure. Don't. <laughs> das reicht nicht, Kylan. Bagger, das reicht nicht. So viel D-Box wie da drinnen gelegen hat, das reicht nicht. Das reicht wirklich nicht mal ansatzweise, Kylan. Schon eine Stapel D-Box, also wenn das Gen 5 ist. Also ich habe jetzt aus dem Augenwinkel äh, acht Pakete gesehen mit D-Box. Das heißt, du kannst schon mal acht mal, acht mal neun rechnen. So. Und dann bist du schon easy, locker über 50 Scheine. Und lass mal jetzt da von GSI noch... Lass mal 20 Lenkräder drin sein. Das sind ja auch schon 20 Scheine. Maga, das reicht nicht. Und selbst 200k reichen nicht. Da, also auch das reicht nicht. Mal ansatzweise. Lass da mal noch Simo-Q-Pedale drin sein. Dann ist alles vorbei. Oh, ja. Also ich würde jetzt mal aus dem Bauch raus sagen, da liegt locker eine halbe Mille in dem Cage drin. Also wenn das mal reicht. Wenn nicht sogar noch mehr. So Pi mal Öre. Weil das waren jetzt, wie viele Reihen sind das gewesen? Eine... Zwei, guck mal, hier schon alleine sind eins, zwei, drei, vier. Da hinten lagen auch noch mal vier D-Box. Wie viele Reihen sind das hier? Uh, da liegt auch noch mal alles. D-Box. Um, Eine the lange Reihe, panels, uh, zwei lange Reihen. Da ist dann know, the vorbei. Stuff, it all kept stored here. Because it would be easy for us to lose control of all Ja, da sind locker über 500 Scheine drin. Was ist das hier? Das sind Azitec Pedale. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Das sind auch schon. Hier oben liegt auch nochmal Azitec. Also schon allein. Das hier sind äh, sechs, sieben, acht. Wie viel habe ich jetzt? Zwei, vier, sechs. Äh, bist du schon bei achteinhalb? Nee, das reicht nicht, Keile. Da liegt schon eine halbe Mille. Darum geht's nicht, Sager. Nein, nein, darum geht es nicht. Es geht einfach nur darum, dass jemand gesagt hat, da liegen 100, 200.000 äh, Dollar drin. Also damit kommst du bei 40 Leute nicht weit, das ist schon klar. Also wir haben nicht von Löhne und sowas geredet. Wenn die, guck mal, wenn die jeden Tag zwischen 40 und 100 Bestellungen haben, ne? Da wird schon ordentlich was rausgehen. Also er hat ja selber gesagt, die simo -Q pedale die sind drinne und dann sind die gleich wieder raus. Also das ist laufender Posten. Also wenn ich mir das jetzt nur mal, bei Denso durfte ich ja mal ein bisschen erfahren, wie das so ist. Also wenn ich mir bei Denso angucke, was da reinkommt und was da rausgeht, das ist ja hier nochmal eine, eine ganze Ecke größer. Und bei Denso ist das schon krass im simray shop Das ist richtig übel. Und da stehst du in dem Laden drin und denkst so, alles klar, okay, okay, okay. Okay, alles klar. Ja. Mm -hmm. You're gonna leave, leave it open just for like about 10 minutes after we're done shooting. <laughs> sure. Don't worry about it. Nothing will go missing. I okay, promise. okay. That's why you brought a big van, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, the Mercedes Sprinter. It's out front. Right. Good idea. Yeah. Let's go up to the. Yeah. Ah, the Sprinter. Da gibt's wieder was Let's Neues. Let's go up to the build room. <laughs> okay. I don't know in which state the build room here is, okay. but we go through here. Yeah, we can go through here. Okay. Phil, watch your step. We don't want to lose you again. Yeah. It's dark. It is dark. Schier 500. So this is our mezzanine. Our actually shop supervisor uh, Ludovic works out of here. Keeps an eye on everything that goes on down there. Da muss ich ganz ehrlich sagen, vor, vor solchen logistischen Dingen habe ich echt sehr große, sehr großen Respekt, weil du musst wirklich alles im Blick haben. Also ich glaube, das ist so ein Job, den machst du 24/7, weil du musst immer wissen, was da ist. Du musst genau den richtigen Zeitpunkt abwarten, wann du was bestellst. Und das muss ja immer ne, ein laufendes Ding sein. Sonst hast du ja irgendwann, naja, sagen wir mal so, es gibt aktuell eine Firma, die hat so ein bisschen Probleme. Wir wollen jetzt hier keine Namen nennen, nicht, dass Leute wieder durchdrehen. Ne, aber wenn du, das möchtest du ja definitiv nie haben. Und da bist du doch als Chef, also das ist logistisch wirklich ein absolut krasses Ding. Wenn ich mir das gerade so durch den Kopf gehen lasse, du musst ja immer alles da haben. Das ist echt übel. Also ich, ich habe da wirklich sehr großen Respekt vor, vor Leuten, die so äh, Lagerbestände im, im Kopf haben und solche, solche Buden leiten. Weil du musst genau wissen, wann du richtig zum richtigen Zeitpunkt bestellst. Du musst das, das muss gedeckt sein, dass du es bezahlen kannst. Dann muss es da sein. Du musst ja wirklich super weit vorausdenken, damit das funktioniert. 
Oh, that's echt crazy. What are these? We got some uh, oh, Samsung Arcs. Oh yeah. Why not? Okay. Well, you know, put we my name on them. <laughs> we have so much stuff laying about. Sometimes we find a set of D box in the ceiling. <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm not An even active kidding. pedal here. <laughs> passive throttle there. Yeah. So this is the build room. So when somebody comes to us and says, listen, I want to get into sim racing. I have a decent budget. I want you guys to come over and do it for me. Yeah. This is where we start the prep work. Which a lot of people are doing nowadays. Absolutely, yeah. So, Even I've noticed like from the real, you know, from racing at the track, everybody's coming up to me asking for custom builds now. Absolutely. Which, and I know firsthand, it's an amazing service. It's the greatest thing ever, yeah. actually. Well, when someone you've, builds you've, your rig and does all the cable management. You've experienced it firsthand? Twice. <laughs> twice, fair enough. So yeah, it's kind of messy right now, but that's, you know, it's always moving around here. So we, we build about anywhere between, I would say, eight and 20 full units a month these days. <laughs> eight and 20. Between eight and 20. It's a, it's a wide range. I mean, the summer slows down, right? Yeah. But now it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, Holy moly. We have a nice little flight sim in the back there that we also I built. I noticed for, that looks a little different than a racing sim. It is not a racing sim. It is yeah. a platform that we built for a company, a little company called Lockheed Martin in the okay. US. Okay. You know, <clears throat> defense contractor. Aliens. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, that's the build room. Um, we Right now we have, I would say 12 guys if you count. Everybody, including Phil, who's holding the cam, but also happens to build rigs like a machine. <laughs> um, we have 12 guys that travel to build these setups. So this is this is the behind the scenes, these the, the offices. offices. Everybody's yeah. home, we're yeah. after hours. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we still have some people here. We have Nick. Hey, man. You dressed up? <laughs> you dressed yeah. up? <laughs> this is Nick. He's one of the owners. Just say hi. Hey, man. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go on YouTube, FYI. You can yeah. keep working. That, that, that's it. No, I was just saying hi. I love the sign in the back, by the way. Guter Chef, so verpisst euch mal. Ich will kein Video aufnehmen. Verschwinde. Damit verdiene ich kein Geld. Hau ab. <laughs> it says, yeah. I can do this. F it. Oh. If I die, I die. <laughs> yeah. Let's get a closer look. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool sign. I love that. Definitely what I do every single day. Pretty much, literally. Well, thanks so much for the tour. Absolutely. That was awesome. I mean, even I, I knew a lot about the company, but I learned a lot more today. And seeing the facility, it's actually pretty yeah. impressive. I'm like when you come here, it's it's incredible. And then you go back behind and you see yeah. actually what happens. You it's, see the work that goes into yeah, it. Yeah, there's a lot of work. And yeah. I can appreciate that. And you guys are working so hard to fulfill orders. Right. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the tour. Absolutely. Yeah. Give you it's a handshake. A I feel like it's the best way to sign it off with a handshake. If you guys enjoyed the tour, make sure you leave a like on the video. and. Um, you can just comment your most interesting part of the video, like what you thought was the most interesting and also what room you would want to spend most of your time in. I think that would be interesting. I know for me, Top Gun, that's me right there. Im Lager. I, in another life, I'm a fighter pilot, but uh, for now, I have to keep being a racing driver Im Lager. to pay the bills. Ganz but, klar. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tour and we'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, ich denke, Sie wollen nicht zeigen, was in der Firma abgeht, Tischbeinkante, weil es öffentlich ist. Also würde ich auch nicht machen. Also wie dein, dein Arbeitsflow ist, weil ich denke, es ist äh, nicht so cool, seine ganzen Geheimnisse abzugeben. Und so stehen da einfach nur leere Maschinen und äh, keiner kann sich das angucken. Und dann ist das, glaube ich, auch noch in den Feiertagen aufgenommen worden, wenn ich das jetzt richtig verstanden habe. Kommt auch noch dazu. Also da sind ja weit, sind nicht alle Mitarbeiter da. Plus, dass du ja auch nicht, also ich meine beispielsweise, wenn wir jetzt zu Alternate gehen würden, also da war ich auch schon. Ich durfte niemals im Lager und im äh, Fulfillment, also im Versand, durfte ich niemals filmen. Never ever. Weil die das nicht zeigen wollen, was da abgeht, damit sich andere Leute das nicht abgucken können. Also die arbeiten schon, aber für solche Videos wird das immer abgelegt.